ですね。Cut loose too. Oh, okay. Well, that was the melody. Doesn't gotta be super slow. That was the melody. Yeah, it was nice. We can both of those. We can do another one. Okay. What if you're just like improvising and okay. you want to add excitement? Sounds great. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> Welcome, welcome, welcome. Once again, we have the wonderful, the amazing, the super talented, awesome instructor, touring guy, and what else do you do? Sessions? Riverville Gamble. Private lessons, Private, everything? Everything. Private Freaking lessons. Under the sun, Jeff Mackerlane. channel, the whole thing. Everything under the sun, Jeff. Yeah. yeah. Can, that, can that be your, your call sign? I'll go by that, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so today we're going to do, uh, <laughs> it's a cool chord progression, mm -hmm. and, and the one thing I've noticed is you have an abundance of blues Mm -hmm. products which are amazing so click the links down below if you want to check those out what i thought we would do is get more into the bigger chord progressions mm -hmm. sure and then how you might still retain a blues sound but start to add melody and more yeah. more of you know you got to get outside the blues sometimes but sure. keep, keep it rooted in the and roots feeling yeah, yeah, the feel. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So what, do you, what do you think what, what's what's tip oh, number one tip number one well this tune is uh off my first record and it's called highlands mm -hmm. and um you know a scottish family and it's, yeah, it's got that kind of thing yeah. you know and that was the worst scottish <laughs> accent ever don't worry all right a couple um, drinks it'll get better but you know what the interesting thing about it is it's probably one of the most typical chord progressions you can come across yeah which is just uh like most pop tunes are this actually right now Kind of funny. Yeah. Um, so it's a one, right? Then I'm to E major to C sharp minor. Right. So one to the six. Uh -huh. right? And then my turnaround, you know, one, six. And I do a one, five. Yeah. 
yeah. which is the B major. Yeah. Six, four, yeah. back to one. So that's like, yeah. I see so a million songs. tunes, yeah. right? Yeah. And then the minor version of it's like, yeah, you know, right? So which is a hundred songs on the radio. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, actually, most songs on the radio. Yeah. That's not why I wrote this. It's actually because it's. <laughs> you did um, yours before. I did. I wrote, God, I wrote this song a long, long, long time ago. Yeah. Like, you know. That's what they all say. Yeah, no, so, no, no. no. <laughs> those are one of those ones where I've been playing it forever. Okay. Um, so, you know, what I liked about it um, is that we can play blues on it, major pentatonic. And Let me ask you this really quick. Are you a scale guy, uh, chord guy, or a mix of both as far as soloing? It's a great question. It, you know, for me, it's a mixture of both. It, when I was coming up, you know, in the, the shreddier era, mm -hmm. we thought about, I never, I thought about chords, and I thought about scales. Yeah. And I never thought, like, the yeah. two were actually... Friends. Friends. <laughs> or they, one is completely dependent upon the right. other. And, um... You know, even when I went to Berkeley, they were like, well, this scale takes, this chord takes this scale. Yeah. Like, so for instance, this crazy way of thinking that people often do, like we have E major and we have C sharp minor. Yeah. And they'll say, well, I'm going to play E major over this, I'm going to play C sharp minor over that. Yeah. And you're like, it's the same, same scale, yeah. you know? So um, when I look at this chord progression, so if we just break it down for a second, mm -hmm. right? So I'm just, it's, it's a one to a six. Everything is diatonic. Okay. So it's all in the same key. Yeah. So I can get away really with playing an E major scale over it, mm -hmm. but I found for me, and maybe you guys do, when I think in terms of a major scale, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, I play very scaly. Okay. And I used to hit a lot of wrong notes. Yeah. Because I would think, well, I got the chord. Yeah. This, this is the right scale. Yeah. I should, it's gotta work. It's gotta work. Yeah. And then you find that that's not really the case. Right. So um, first things first, I would say pentatonic, right? Yeah. Just E major pentatonic. It just sounds good. Right. You get old Hendrix, you kind of yep. little things like that. And then you find after a little while, well, you're missing a lot of really, really cool notes. Yeah. By doing that. So what I'm going to think about to answer your question is, I think about chord tones all the time. Okay. So if I'm thinking, you know, C major, sorry, E major, to C sharp minor. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of notes that stay the same. Yeah. The G sharp and E. And E major is spelled E, G sharp, and B. Yeah. So I have this, right? Let's look at the picture yeah. of the chords right there. Yep. I go to C sharp minor. Mm -hmm. If I were in tune. So I have that C Close sharp. So the only note that's different between these two chords is a C sharp. Okay. So you can just play those two chords. I'll yep. just kind of just back to the one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, there's those two notes. Yeah. There's my C sharp. I'm gonna play the B and E chord. Uh, wait, 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 right? Switch chords? No, oh. no, no, no. I'm, okay. I'm playing the B, so I'm playing oh. a chord tone of E. Yeah, okay. So got let's it. play those two again. Three, okay. Two, four, five, six. It's my B, it's my C sharp. So it's, you know, the yeah, fifth of the chord cool, to the root. And I look for these, right? So really wants to go somewhere. I was like, okay, now I'm gonna go to E. Now I'm gonna stay the same because it's E's between the two chords. Beautiful, all yeah. right? Now the G sharp, G sharp's in the C sharp chord. Now you're gonna make a melody, watch. See, some, see what I did? Think of that B, watch. Where's that one to go? You know, so I'm going to try to find things that are really Unique. Um, simply in the chord progression. Because, mm -hmm. you know, when we're thinking E major pentatonic, we're always thinking, like, you know, yeah. pounding that yeah, E each totally. time. Yeah. And then, you know, on the C sharp minor, you have, a, you have these great melodies that you can build within the chord. Yeah. Within the scale, I should say. So, You know, what's funny is the first pass you did just a second ago sounded, you know, like what you'd expect, but mm -hmm. then... When you play the other two notes of the chord, it was almost like it took on like a Jeff Buckley kind of a vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like that different kind of, I think people get so rooted in thinking about a scale rather than what you're saying. Yeah. The chords, you don't realize you have so many other so, melody choices that you can yeah. be making. And, you know, usually when you're hearing a, a melody in a song, it's usually going to be the root, the third, and the fifth of the chord. Mm -hmm. And then maybe sometimes the seventh. But you're, you're very, really, say if you were to sing a melody to this, you would, you would probably not sing the flat nine. You would, you know what I mean? Like, ah, 
you know, like, Mariah Carey yeah, on it, right? yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you, so you got it almost always, and all the great tunes, if you think about, like, you know, the Beatles, or, like, these kind of melodies is very, um, you know, Celtic, or something, yeah. it's always going to be root three or five, Yeah, like, it's just very, very simple, this is all triads, I'm not sure. using, so when I started thinking about, well, here's, here's the, when I started thinking about what I wanted to play, mm -hmm. as opposed to just playing yeah. some scale over the top right. of it, it was. It changed everything. It does change everything. It's such a trip. Yeah. So it comes down to. So if if like okay. So um, and then we we do the turnaround and we do that for a second. We have the E right mm -hmm. to the B. Well, what I would look at here. Well, and here's the thing. If you just picture the chord, here's my E chord, right? And I go to the B. Well, what is different? Well. Yeah. Right. So mm -hmm. if I'm gonna go, you know. Yeah, I'm playing. Yeah. Let's go to the one, one six two five. Let's go to the turn on the D. Okay. This right. Okay. Okay. And just back and forth yeah. between those. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. You right? Right, so yeah, which is incredible because the, I mean, it, it and it's so simple. Mm -hmm. But like, if you do that and then mix in your yeah blues licks, like Others. now you have something, that, you know. That's kind of the way I look at it. You know, um, the melody of this song is just chord tones. Yeah, and what I'm just doing on that turn on just to kind of talk about it one more. I'm I when I first started getting into it, really, what it comes down to, uh, you need to know no the notes. The names of the notes in every chord. Yeah. And you need to know where they all are. In the Dang paper. it. I know. <laughs> but the, what was cool, and so you get to that point, and that's a tall order, you know, yeah. knowing your triads, yeah. knowing all the inversions, super important. But you can just um, envision the chord shape. Yeah. So if I went, then I can go to A, see if you're kind of familiar with mm -hmm. that one. So if you'd want to do everything in this position, yeah. Like, so you start seeing that I can just play E for my E chord, that goes down to my D sharp for my B chord. Now you go back up to the E for the C sharp minor chord, mm -hmm. and stay in the E for the A chord. Yeah. And then back. So I, my whole, those two notes covers everything. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? And then if I want to get out of the chord tones for just a sec, I can do like... You know what I mean? Like yeah. you can dance around another yeah, yeah, note yeah. around it and just start to build a melody. <sighs> That's amazing. All right, so I thought of this. So nobody's ever, this is my stuff. <laughs> I'm sharing it with you. Patented. Just, yeah, patented. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Trademarked the whole bit. bit. Yeah. Um, okay, so if you were to add a little bit of blues flair okay. to that, but still keep your melody. And then also one other thing well, is uh, that I think a lot of people overlook too is the different kinds of vibrato oh, yeah, you're huge. using. Well, yeah. let's, let's talk about, so the first thing first, is uh, the first thing you think about is bending to the, the chord tone, mm -hmm. right? So see if we have that E chord, right? Um, yeah. I'm gonna bend my F sharp to my G sharp. Mm -hmm. Right? Go to the other chord. Then. Yeah. Or I can go. And then stand that. Right? Yeah. See, but even little moves like that, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, you, so, you go ahead. No, 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 please, I'm get sorry. Get excited. I know, I get all excited, and I'm out of tune. <laughs> Eric, I heard, I heard that out of tune. So we talk about that. Nice, man. Well, I mean, come on, I'm sitting next to the crate. I better do something, right? Okay, so... Um, so the first thing you can do is find a chord tone and bend mm -hmm. to it. So the G sharp, I'm going to bend the F sharp to the G sharp. Okay. Right? Oh. Wait a second, that was cool. All right, so I just bent my F sharp to my G sharp. And then, I bent up a whole why, step. Why does that work? Because it's in the scale. Yeah. Oh, but you, right? just, you just bent there. But, is that, that like Beckish or like, where, where's that, where, where did you start picking that stuff up? Um, yeah, Jeff Beck, he's yeah. like my all time favorite. It keeps getting better too. That God, that guy, man. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> I and just I'm like, you're in your seventies, dude. Like, give us, give other people a he's chance. He's so inspiring. And you know what it is about him? It's like the, um, 
you know, I used to, when I was younger, I think we came from a lot of the same background. Right. You know, I'm still loved like Ingve and yeah. you know, came from more shreddy For background. Sure. And I had all the Jeff Beck records when I was younger, and I loved them, I listened to them all the time. But it never sunk into me that that is actually, in its own way, just as difficult, if not more difficult, oh, to play. Than, for sure. I'm saying Ingve, but that's Ingve. Look, the other thing is, when I was younger, I thought I had a handle on some of the Ingve yeah. stuff. No, no, no nobody no, ever does. No, no, Ingve has the handle. Yeah, on exactly. So, it was, <laughs> but with Beck, when I realized like the amount of control, when I was younger, I was more obsessed with the technique. Yeah. And I didn't realize like, wow, but to to play that and get those bends and get your pitch and right, pitch and then, right, all the bar stuff, all too. the bar, but just the creativity. Yeah. And the sheer control he has over the instrument. The, the tone, too. Yeah. It's all in his hands, too, yeah. no matter what he plays. Through, you know? <sighs> Freaking ridiculous. Okay, so okay. anyway, sorry. You just, you Tangent. Just, so what I did there was just bend up the whole step. And a lot of tunes, so I went. Right? Mm -hmm. There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I, sometimes, you know, it's a little weird, guys. When you do it really slow, sometimes I can I feel like I get a little pitchy. But if I just yeah. play it in the moment, like yeah. you know, yeah, for you, know, sure. you kind of grab a little easier. That's kind of not the greatest excuse. You should practice it. Like, well, it's more you're more naturally going to be playing it at that speed, yeah. anyways. Yeah, it's almost like a singer. They're not always in yeah. perfect pitch, just but you're flipping no. right around there. No, let me Gilmore too. Oh yeah, totally. And yeah. one thing that sometimes if I'm doing that, you, you might have noticed I just put my hand on my bridge a little bit, mm. just to kind of stabilize it a little yeah. bit. Because I have it floating, which is oh, great for the you know like the right, you know, you know the yeah, which is so fun. So I went you know, so you see the bar. If you look, you know it's gonna move. It's gonna, it's move, gonna move down, right? Yeah, I'm off camera there. So the the bar is moving. So what I do is sometimes just That's put my a hand a little idea. bit on the bridge. It just stabilizes a little yeah. bit because I jump between Les Pauls. And and strats a lot. Yeah. And so just a little thing as you're practicing, you're working on your strat with a floating bridge, and then you go to a less point, you're like, woo, you know, yeah. because right. the tension is totally different. So I would, you know, you want to sure. experiment on that guitar sometimes. It is fun. weird because as you bend up, it wants to, it loosens it, up, right? Yeah, watch. I mean, I go, <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, and I've got three springs, but totally. I, so when I do that, right, but sometimes I want to go like, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I'll kind of. You know, yeah. Strap, you know, do oh, that makes sense, man. I've never heard anybody say that before. That's funny. See? Yeah. So it goes. Yeah. If I want to go, you can find it. Yeah. You know, it's cool though. In a live performance, like if you do it and it's close enough, it's great. Yeah. But sometimes, you know, you know what I mean. Like yeah. if it goes, you know. Yeah. So there's there's things that are really indicative to the guitar that you play and, and the way you have it set up. Mm -hmm. It's a total tangent there, but okay, it's okay. So back to back to. So with with this thing, phrasing. I will practice the bend, you know, right? And then there we go. There it is. Yeah. And so at that point, you're using more of the major scale. Than yeah. Those other notes. Right. Yeah, right. And then you start to find them, right? Yeah. Okay. So but what's also nice that I hadn't thought about much, and even in the blues or this. Is that there's notes inside the pentatonic scale that are going to be in all of those chords. Yep. So you can have like a nice experiment, like as we did before. Mm -hmm. Then you hear the chord, right? Then yeah. Did you hear? You know, like mm -hmm. yeah. Right. What I played. Let's break it down. C sharp. So it's two coffees. Yeah. <laughs> And, and being a New Yorker, right? Um, <laughs> That's right. Everything's got to be done quick there. Oh, man. I, it's just so funny. Like when I go down to other places and I'm yeah. in line for coffee, right. and I'm like, you know, yeah. I'm like, hey, it's all right. It's okay, man. Take, take your time. Take your time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Without getting the stink eye. <laughs> right. But so, e ma <laughs> <laughs> so E major pentatonic is spelled uh, E, F sharp, G sharp, B, and C sharp. Mm -hmm. Okay. So each one of those notes or two of those notes is going to be in each of those chords. Okay. So if I'm just sticking straight to the pentatonic scale, I mm -hmm. can find in my E, we talked about that before. Yep. Go to my C sharp minor, the only different notes is C sharp. Okay. Now when I go to the B chord, I've got a nice B, mm -hmm. F sharp, and B again. Okay. B major spelled B, D, F, B, D sharp, F sharp. Good for you. God, and then when I go to A, it's A, C sharp, and E. So we, we don't have an A. Okay. So we have a C sharp and we have an E. All right. So what's kind of fun and a really great intellectual exercise and a great musical exercise is you can find chord tones 
to all those chords just in the pentatonic scale. Yeah. And that's a really cool sound too. Yeah. You know, and then when you throw in something like the A. Yeah, it really something. has impact. Yeah, yeah. exactly, yeah. Uh -huh. And the D sharp. Oh, I love that one. Right? I love that. It's such yeah. a good sound. Yeah. So in terms of, so you add about the blues lick, right? Mm -hmm. So you can, you know. Now I think about it. that's all like Hendrix. Yeah. yeah, that kind of stuff that I got, you know, from working through Jimmy's stuff. You know, um, one of the things you did was uh, that. Oh yeah, 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 that kind okay. of sound. Yeah, and I don't think many people. I'm I'm working with that a bunch myself lately now, and it's such a cool sound. You don't hear that many people do it. Mm -hmm. Of course, now you will. But right. let's see. Let's see well, some examples of that. I think. Yeah. Oh yeah. Went up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you go. <laughs> it's live. Yeah. Okay, so what I'm looking for a lot of times is music is about tension and release. Yeah. And, you know, being having a pretty strong jazz background and stuff too, and loving that, like, Beck would do stuff like that. Yeah. And then, you know, like the fusion of guys like Scott Henderson or Lindau uh -huh. or, you know. Um, bastards. Like, you can play, there's, these are in the scale, so if I'm thinking about, well, here, we've got this D sharp, which is in E major. All right, mm -hmm. and I'm gonna play the two of them together. I can really play off of that. All right, so the Hendrix thing would be like, mostly pentatonic, yeah. you know? Sometimes you do like, yeah. like a sus chord. But you can get notes that are in the scale with the half steps or whole steps. So here I have, um, same note, D sharp and E. Was that me over the E chord? Yep. Because my superimposed chord is is E major seven, basically. So I'm playing. Yeah. Now watch. So I went, you know, this band E yeah. major go. Yeah. And I'm gonna keep that. Yeah, it's something about those the double stops in that way is such a cool. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. And so what I did up top here. Then I think I moved to like. Yeah. You no, know, this kind of. This is some kind of like a fun finger sort of game. Oh. It's like one's going up, one's going down. Yeah, yeah. So contrapuntal motion. <laughs> what you call me? We talk, we talk about punk. Yeah. Oh, that was like your blues. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. That turn. That turn. Okay, yeah, yeah, that. Yeah. Same That's thing here one. is this, I'm gonna play um, uh, E, F sharp, and G sharp, and then I have D sharp, C sharp, and B. Okay. So I can play around with all of those. I can do like a. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. But what I did was this. That sounds great. And it's really pretty because there I have E. And G sharp, oh, sorry, B and G sharp. Yeah. So it's a nice part of my E chord. Yeah. E major spelled E G sharp B. So the same kind of thing. So if I have this, you know, B, and you play your C sharp minor, play C sharp minor chord. Okay. Back to E. Yeah. Yep, just go to the it's one sixty five, so the C. Fine, it's super classical. Sure. Then you yeah. <laughs> look at you. Do you practice much? <laughs> yeah. Where, where, where would you hear that stuff like that? Like, where are some good examples of people that... Um, oh, that Eric Johnson. Yeah. You know, like his well. chord stuff, you know, I think really... Song. You got a song that comes to mind? Oh, man, I know. Or album. So bad. Well, anything from Obvious Music yeah. Com. Yeah. Um, you know what I really, I really learned a lot from? That first Total Electric Guitar by Eric Johnson, that first oh, instructional that's video. that's a great video. That intro in, uh, you know, I learned so much from that. And then there's just... 
like Bill Frizzell. Okay. You know, he does a lot of these sort of great chord things. Um, Schofield, when he plays just these solo guitar parts like that, you know, the, he's got a line that's moving and this and that. And being a, a big fan of classical music as yeah. well, and a lot of that Baroque-ish sounding stuff. Okay, you know, does that. Yeah, you know, like that whole... Yeah, which, you know, pops into pop music all the time. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. That's key, some... key parts. Yeah. What about uh, if you're freaking playing live and you're just, you're going to step it up a notch? Okay. How do you keep that flavor and not just wank? Like, you, you, you yeah. some things that you can do to make it sound really cool, but still very melodic. At the yeah, well, you know, what I like in this tune, when we went to that that B section, it's a set form, it's A, A, B. So we had that, you know, went to the second part, which is the B to A. I just kind of ramp it up there. And a lot of times I just think straight blues on that because it broke okay. up the, I often, treat, you, you play songs enough that you might treat them the same way each mm -hmm. time. So these two core, this first half gives me the moment to be a little more baroque -y, as you were yeah. saying, or just a little more into the chords. And sometimes when you do the, you know, that, it's going to be, and at that point I'll kick on some overdrive, you know. So um, let me ask you this, and I don't yep. know if I was playing that wrong. Coming out of your song, did you go back to no, it would just sit on just, the C sharp. Line. Just, yeah, yeah. Okay, so it's yeah. Okay, yeah. let's do that. Let's do one pass. Okay, ready, and then we'll go into your B section. Mm -hmm. Count me off, Maestro. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> So what I always you, want that. Yeah, I know, right? D that, sharp that, right that, there, that, but I don't have your metal days, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The twenty-four fret. I just done this one time. Yeah. Um, so when you go to the B section, you're thinking, is it you're still your E major pentatonic? Yeah, E style? major. Yeah, and in my head, I'm suddenly thinking C sharp minor pentatonic. I don't know. Like when I think bluesy, sometimes like that. Yeah, E major. Yeah. Yeah. And then, um, so are you resolving to the you know like you would an E major like? Um, well, I'm gonna the two or chords. Are you right? playing it more like C sharp minor? Well, well, when I, here's the crazy thing. It's a guitar way of thinking, and it's just stupid. But what I'm thinking sometimes on the A chord, I'm not going to resolve on the the the, the B. Like I'm going to resolve on that C sharp. I like that, you know. Okay. Yeah, it's part of the chord. Right? It's the yeah. it's the third of the chord. So right. get into back to the B. Okay. But you know, honestly, yeah, you're sliding up to that B, anyways. Yeah, you know, honestly, I'm just thinking of it as E major, or C sharp minor. Like Let I don't go. Yeah, I don't want to be in the spirit. Yeah, I don't think about I, what I mean to say is I don't think I don't think about scales. Yeah. I just think of it as that's the sound, and yeah. I just know what note to resolve to. Sure. So back to chord having tones. doing it enough. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And then to kind of come out of it to kind of break that, you know, yeah. then I well, you know, you know, like kind of you go back into a bit of a major scale thing or a six. You know, Ooh, that, that, that was cool. And actually, I do a crescendo of the song at the okay. end. And I just kind of play by myself, you know, right. and then, <laughs> you know. Oh, that's cool. That's how I start the song. What's that show? Break that down. All right. Um, do I two different things. Okay, so just the sixth thing mm -hmm. is I'm thinking E major, because I'm in E major, and okay. I want to make sure I hit the right chord at the right time. So E major on one string. Mm -hmm. Right then, here I'm going to start on my fifth string. And you do it in unison. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so I can find those, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and okay. I can play that a little better. So do that though, but you're adding some notes in there. 
and then you would, what was the hammer on? Oh, uh, you did one on the lower string too. I did? Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, and there I'm just thinking more scale tones yeah. of like, so. That's and you cool. start to hear those, those resolutions. What's the uh, what's the Henderson song that ends like that on Tore Down House? Do you know what I'm talking about? He has something that's yeah, very similar yeah, to that. Yeah, I do know what you're talking about. It's a slower blues. Yeah, and I'm not going to say song. I'm not influenced by Scott. I mean, you know, but it de but it's yeah, no, it's exactly the same kind of same. Yeah, yeah, which yeah is totally so cool. So the intro of the tune, which is you know on the record, is like you know. I do like you know that kind of thing that yeah. What you know? Come um, on. Then you know, back in the top, right? Right. So where, where, when have you broke that song down? Uh, nowhere. Oh, Jeff, come right on. Right, right, well. uh, All right, we should stop there rambling. This is awesome though. Okay, so Jeff's in town. We're uh, filming a course. Make sure you sign up for my email list down below. I'll leave a link and then that'll, you'll know when the course comes out. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do stuff just like this. Just like this. Imagine that. Right. All about your influences. Yes. What are your influences? Let, let, let them fly. All right. Um, that's going to be in the course. Oh, it's going to be in the course. Yeah. Uh, Eric Clapton, Circa Cream and Blues Breakers, for God. sure. Uh, yeah, David Gilmore, uh, uh -huh. Jeff Beck, uh -huh. and um, Schenker. Michael Schenker. Yes! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Forgot. I'm sold. You sold me already. Alex, this is some awesome. good ones. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Are you going to get all freaking crazy with the bar in the back? I'll teach, I'll, I'll show you how to do all that stuff. Yeah, you know, it's been, and there's so many guys who do it. It is one of the things I try to be careful not to overdo yeah. it. You know what but I mean? Man, but it is, it is cool. cool if you, stuff. If you put it in, it's just a whole other element. Um, like for me, just, you know, just, you know, if I brought it in course, if you could yeah. do it this way, but yeah. it doesn't have the same kind of thing as that. Is there anybody else you can think of that does that really well? Scott Henderson, yeah. Michael Landau. Can you take it off of his guitar though? <laughs> I, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I'm a huge Henderson fan. Yeah, I, but live. That well, you know, like he likes that thing. Yeah, he does. He says like it's like his voice, and you know, look, who am I to say anything? Yeah. you know. But geez, um, Michael Lando for uh, sure, great. You know, and you can it's tell a couple of slouches. Yeah, you can tell Lando's got a lot of. Um, well, do respect to you, one of my favorite guitar players. A lot of Jeff Beck, you can hear mm -hmm. that influence. Look at you know, in Hendrix, you know, like in Band of Gypsies, he's using it. That whole oh, like kind of like that. Uh, yeah. That kind of more the bounce. Yeah. We'll talk about all this stuff on how to use the bar and how to set it up and Sweet. and all the um, important stuff to make it right. Because um, if it's not set up right, good luck with that. Yeah, it doesn't really work so well. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so make sure you check the links below. Check his other courses. He's an awesome, awesome, awesome instructor. I'm sure you all know who he is, but if not, by all means, go to his site and check it out. You've got like, what, 197 courses out now? With Truefire, we've got <laughs> S-Stan's going to be 32 courses. Dude! <laughs> How do you, I mean, how do you have any licks left to teach? I'd be like, okay, on course 15, I'd be like, I'm done, I'm, I'm out. Well, you know, it, it's just, you know, sometimes I think, uh, I try to come up with different material, but I think it's yeah. always just like different angles. I yeah. feel like the more I've done it, the more, yeah. the better I am at explaining this stuff. Yeah. And, yeah. Well, see, and I've seen all of his courses and they're great. They really are. And Thank so when we much. brought them over here, I'm like, I saw there was a, it was like an Instagram clip or something mm -hmm. of you playing one of your albums and you were doing some stuff. I'm like, 
I have never heard you do that. Yep. So what I made him focus on is all the stuff I've never heard you do, we're doing it over here. So make sure you check that out. Totally check out his other courses though. If you want to get like a blues and blues rock thing down, they're really, really, really good. Thanks. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> all right, stay tuned. More to come. Thanks for watching.